You're going to have a very tough choice the day after you take the oath of office, or maybe even the day that you take the oath of office. You're either going to have to pardon yourself or you're going to have to fire Jack Smith. Which one will you do? Oh, it's so easy. It's so easy. I would fire him within two seconds. Because of course he would, and he'll be able to, and why wouldn't he? He's a rich and powerful person. It doesn't matter whether he committed crimes. You don't get to know what crimes he committed. He gets to just go scot-free. That's what him being elected potentially will lead to. Maybe in all of the cases he's facing, certainly in most of the cases that he's facing. I don't think as many Republicans are saying today, that's at all why people voted for him, that they hate the lawfare against him. I think that's utterly ridiculous on its face, but he will definitely make it have that effect. He's not the only person even pushing for this. Lindsey Graham says to Jack Smith and your team, it's time to look forward to a new chapter in your legal careers as these politically motivated charges against President Trump hit a wall. The Supreme Court substantially rejected what you were trying to do, as if that means literally anything about the country. And after tonight, it's clear the American people are tired of lawfare. Bring these cases to an end. The American people deserve a refund. First of all, Lindsey Graham, you know that you can just like communicate to Jack Smith directly. You don't have to tweet yeah. it, by the way. Obviously, this is all performative vice signaling or whatever. But um, no, it's not at all clear that that's what the American people think. Now, the American people accepted the fact that he is a rampant, wanton criminal. They did. If you voted for him, it was not a deal breaker. That is simply the case. The fact that he definitely sent a mob at the Capitol, that he tried to assemble fake electors to steal the election, that he stole the classified documents, that he committed massive fraud in New York, that he definitely did the hush money payments, that he raped E. Jean Carroll. We could go on and on and on about all of these crimes. Those were not a deal breaker. Okay, that doesn't mean people don't want them investigated, but that is likely to be the result. And, you know, maybe he pardons himself in general, maybe he gets rid of Jack Smith, maybe he demolishes the DOJ building. I don't know. We can get into some of the specifics, but bear in mind, he is facing sentencing on the fraud case in just three weeks or so. And again, I cannot imagine now that the legal system is going to do what the American people wouldn't and throw him, you know, out of the White House or whatever. But that's what's going on, Sharon. What do you think? I don't even think he'll show up in the courtroom in, in three weeks. Probably, yeah. I, I don't think he will listen to anything they say. He won't report. Um, he won't listen. And I don't I agree with you. They're not gonna put him in jail. Okay. That was never gonna happen anyway. And frankly, Jack Smith and the rest of them can go, and I'm going to tell you why. They didn't really want to prosecute this guy. Look how long it took them to get this thing going, okay? He basically was coddled and rocked like a baby, you know, the National Archive. But can you please bring back the documents? We won't tell anybody. We'll even send a courier, please, please. <laughs> and he gave him the middle finger or double, okay? And he said, no. This is my love letter to Kim Jong Un, and these are my things. And no one did anything. And then they tried to scare him. Ooh, a bunch of the blue jackets with you know FBI on the back, and they showed up at Mar-a-Lago. Really? Yeah. They didn't even get everything. Okay. Where are the people who turned on him? Okay. Yeah. It, yes, he's going to do. I take D. He's going to do all of the above. He's going to fire, pardon, go after whatever your choices were. I think you gave. A, B, and C. I take D, all of the above. Yeah, look, and and it, I, I think that you're almost certainly right. Uh, many conservatives will look at all that's happened legally in regard to Donald Trump, and they come out of that having learned exactly the wrong lesson about what all of it means. They think it's the elites trying to take down a champion of the working man or whatever. That's madness. He's gonna suffer almost no consequences for any of these crimes, any one of which would have landed you in jail for the rest of your life because elites protect elites. It, again, it doesn't matter that he committed many of these crimes in full public view that we saw him do it. It doesn't matter how much evidence, none of that matters, okay? Because there are always judges there to protect him. The Supreme Court will protect him if they have to. They'd prefer if like the appeals level got it or something and nipped justice in the bud. And at this point, like him getting rid of Jack Smith and everything, I guess he needs to do it as a technicality. 
But most of this has already disappeared because the elites protect the elites. And let me mention here, I'll mention it here, okay? The New York Times, and I had this argument with Cenk on the air tomorrow. I'm sure we'll argue more about it. But do we do we have that front page graphic? Because we are not going to be able to recover as a country unless we can be honest about what is going on. Trump's America, victory changes nation sense of itself. Look, Trump's America, I think, is going too far. It's going to be a narrow victory. But the other line is fine. Populist revolt against elites vision of the US. What are you talking about? Now, I don't disagree that the right thinks it's a populist movement. I don't disagree that he pitches himself as a populist. But if nothing he would do accomplishes populist ends, if he's only gonna get in and lower the richest taxes and lower their regulation, protect them from literally anything that can challenge their stranglehold on our politics, it is insane to call it populist. Okay, now, I know Jenk last night said, well, he's a fake populist. And I agree with Jenk there. But if you have to continually put the fake in front of it, why use the word in the first place? Because they're not even putting fake populists in the New York Times. They're implying that there is something genuinely anti elite about Donald Trump who is going to pack his cabinet with the literal richest people in the world. And that is madness to me, okay? I don't know what word would be accurate to describe a person who uh, gloms on to genuine populist sentiment, but has no intention of doing any of it. And in fact, is only advancing the interests of the uber uber elite. But you know, there's a lot of letters in our language. Maybe we can come up with something. Maybe chat GPT can come up with a word, I don't know. So anyway, I find that to be frustrating. And the legal stuff, this is thematically tied. He has always been protected in ways that no regular person would be. His existence is not a refutation of the elites. It is a confirmation of the power that they have and always have had. Anyway, any comments about any of that or should we move on to policies? What do you think? I said move on to policies. I can't I, I can't button that any better than you just did. It's it's a fact. By the way, he's never been held accountable his whole life because of the system that protected him. What were his yeah. grades again? Did we ever get those? Exactly, exactly. What are his grades? What are his medical records? What are his taxes look like? You don't need to know anything, you stupid little peasant, okay? He's an elite, he doesn't need to make that stuff clear. He's never even been personally held accountable for anything he's done. I saw a thing from Tiffany Trump about him or whatever, and I thought, look, I get there is family. But isn't it strange that with as many kids as he has, none of them had any reaction to him being found liable for raping E. Jean Carroll? None of them cared, seemingly. Is that not strange? Melania was still walking around with him after him being found to have raped a woman. Didn't have any effect whatsoever. And I know a lot of people think that it was a stand in, it wasn't actually Melania. I think that's going way too far. I don't, let's leave the conspiracies to the right. Members make a difference here at TYT. You help make the show happen and we see you in the chat with your loyalty badge. Click the join button to become a member today.